Hello all. About a week or so ago, almost two weeks, I got in my DNA 20D bogger box. Take a look. This is all stabilized wood. The reason why I chose stabilized wood, well, maybe there's a little snob appeal, but it's more expensive. But on top of that, uh, supposedly they bake the wood with resin, and this makes it extra hard. I don't know, but it's uh, very, very shiny, and it's very, very nice. What's unique about this unit, is, or APV, is that this is a DNA 20D chip. That's the latest chip from Evolve. Now, if you look carefully, it's a little hard to see, I realize, okay, you'll see that we've got an eight milliliter bottle. It takes an 18650 battery. Now, usually we're at about 7.30 and somewhere around eight o'clock in the morning, I put in a Panasonic 18650, their high drain 2900 mAh, and that lasted all day until around 645, and now I just have, you know, a standard AWIMR uh, battery, okay? Now, what's really neat about the variable volt, bo bo not, not the variable volt, I gotta get out of that habit, in the DNA 20, is that it's a variable watt, and it has one screen, and on the screen, it shows your watts, it shows the volts that it's putting out, and it shows your battery health. Now, I found out a few things about this after you know a week and a half. The first is, the watts is dead on accurate. Um, the reason why I know that is that I have a tankometer, and I put it on, and I also have an atomizer reader. And when I do a reading of both the atomizer and, or the RBA, and I do it of the volts it's putting out under load, voila, the exact watts is matching what's on the bogger box. Now, what's interesting though, is that the volts always show higher. And I believe that that's because it shows the volts that it's putting out to get those watts. And what's actually reaching the atomizer is something different. Now, right now, I have a Realizer uh, 2, uh, version 2, which is my absolute favorite um, RBA of all time. The reason is that the real, well, I'll show you a little bit later. But anyway, I'm going to take a vape. Now let me tell you what has really impressed me about this variable volt bogger box. Maybe the, the first thing is that it will go all the way down to 0.6 ohms on the atomizer. Um, I believe that Provari has a one ohm limitation and so do most of the other uh, variable volt chips. This one will go down to 0.6 and it will vape it at exactly uh, 20 watts. And I found that to be probably my all-time you know, favorite vape. Now, another thing that I like about the DNA 20D chip, or about the unit, is that unlike my other one, it only uses one battery. And it's very efficient. At 20 watt vaping on a 2900 mAh battery, pretty heavy vaping, and I realize this is you know, not very scientific, I'm able to go a day, or what I would consider a day, 11 hours, you know, of heavy vaping. So there's not much changing. And then on top of that, you combine that with an 8 milliliter bottle, and you can basically go a whole day without fiddling uh, with anything. Okay, um, I'm trying to think of a negative to the DNA 20 chip. Um, probably the only negative is that um, when I saw a uh, video review, it showed that it would go sub-ohm, but that it wouldn't register the ohms, but it would still vape. Um, 
I did not find this on the variable volt unit. When I put a 0.5 ohm on it, it simply wouldn't work. So, but on the other hand, 0.6 ohms is pretty darn good. Um, now, what can we compare this to? Okay, if we were to compare this to a Provari, um, just know there is absolutely no comparison. Okay, the DNA20D chip simply leaves the Provari in the dust because it will go down to lower ohms, it'll go higher amps. Okay, I've gotten over 5.9 amps out of this, um, higher watts. Uh, you know, the Provari just can't compete. Okay, you know, the other units might be the Vamo. The Vamo only does 15 watts the atomizer. Again, can't compete. And, you know, can't compete. Um, same thing with the Z Max. The only thing that, you know, I would say might be superior would be a high end mechanical or, you know, a mechanical if you're willing to change out the batteries all the time and if you want to go sub 6 ohm vaping. So, you know, to be frank, uh, there is a limitation and to some people, you know, that 0.6 ohm is, is a deal breaker. To me, you know, I think it's fan, you know, I think that, you know, this is far better than what I expected it to do. Now, the other thing that I like is that um, at, you know, right now, for example, I'm at, let's take a look. I'm at 0.8 according to this, which could mean as high as 0.71, which I suspect, right? And it says it's putting out 4.2. Well, I'm not sure what it's putting out. I'd have to look at a chart and I don't want to bore you with it. But I know that it's going to vape, you know, 20, you know, 20 watts. So I assume it'll be around the 3.8, 3.7, you know, range. Okay, difference between this and a mechanical at 0.8 is that as that battery goes down, once that battery hits 3.8, forget it. You're down in the low threes. This variable volt DNA20D box will keep a stable 20 watts on whatever I put on it until the very end when the battery goes bye-bye. Now, one thing that I found, and this may be because I don't have the ability, you know, I keep the box closed, so I'm not always looking at it though, is that whenever the battery goes, uh, you know, goes down and is empty, um, you know, instead of saying empty battery or flashy or whatever, I always get like an atomizer error. Is that a deal breaker? No, definitely not. And I don't know if prior to that it hasn't been saying, you know, that I got to change my battery. The other thing, you know, is that I don't think the battery in indicator is that accurate. I've been able to go hours where it looks like the battery is empty and it's not. Is that a deal breaker? No. You know, the only deal breaker that I can imagine for this unit would be, number one, it's a little bit bigger than the variable volt bogger and a lot bigger than Rio Grande. Um, you know, so the size might, you know, the size of it might be, uh, you know, a deal breaker for some. Um, the chassis is wood. So you better be careful not to drop it on concrete. That's my nightmare. Now I've dropped it a million and one times on the carpet and I've had nothing happen to it, knock on wood. Okay, not a thing. But I sure don't want to drop it on concrete because for all I know, it might crack. So that, for some people, if you need real durability, okay, you know, that would be, you know, a deal breaker. Now, what about the craftsmanship? Okay, the seams are perfect. The wood has imperfections in it, but this is natural wood. It's supposed to have imperfections. Um, you know, looking inside, um, you know, um, I've spilled juice and into it and nothing has leaked in. So as far as I can tell, this thing is, you want to call it juice tight or water tight. Um, you know, the one thing that I didn't like is that when I originally received it, my, the nozzle, okay, the way this works, by the way, is, okay, you have a bottle, and if you look, there's a metal nozzle. Well, the nozzle was a little bit too far to the right, and, um, okay, I use a very viscous 
VG juice, far different than what normal people use. So I don't believe that your normal person would have run into a problem, but I did. Uh, I didn't find that the flow was as good as uh, my former variable volt unit. So I contacted uh, Marcus, the owner of a bogger box. As always, he got back to me quickly, super service, and he offered to replace it. And then I asked his permission, hey, can I take a set of pliers and you know move that nozzle around? And he said, fine. So I ended up bending it over and then uh, opening it up. Is that a deal breaker? No, the, you know, the, this is handcrafted. You know, occasionally there might be an error and the manufacturer was, was very willing to fix this error quickly and you know gave me the ability to basically mess up the unit <laughs> you know doing my Mickey Mouse fix now the nice thing is is I bent it over and then you know with a screw and I mean it took tremendous force and then I squeezed it to open the nozzle up again it works perfectly it's at an angle okay but one thing that it, it, it illustrates is okay if you look very carefully, this is epoxied in. It's, it's hard to see, but there's a heavy layer of epoxy. And that epoxy is just rock hard. And I believe it's, you know, I was talk, I, I was emailing back and forth. And one of the things that, you know, that I did ask about was the sensitivity of the 510 connection. And um, he emailed, emailed me back that he solidly epoxies everything in about, uh, I forget if he said an eighth of an inch high, and he doesn't have a problem. So the problem that I've had before with some units where if I use a voltage test or something that has a very uh, protuberant uh, 510 adapter is that uh, it will push the 510 pin in and you're dead. Well, this guy epoxies it, Marcus, he epoxies it so strongly that I have never run into that issue. Uh, this is my second bogger box, by the way. Um, I just could not resist, you know, trying out the DNA 20D. And I like it. The DNA 20D is civilized. Doesn't matter what I put on it. It puts out accurate voltage, not voltage, but accurate wattage. Okay. And um, it puts out, this one puts out 20 watts, which just about blows away any other variable volt uh, out there, okay? Now, my variable volt bogger box did go a little bit higher in the voltage. Um, it was, you know, but um, I found it was able to push 22 or 23 watts, but it wasn't as civilized as this unit. See, this APV is civilized. All it has is two buttons. You want it to go higher, you push this button. You want it to put lower, you push that button. And, you know, that's basically it. I mean, this is brain dead easy. And then you look on here and it tells you your ohms. Now, I do have one, diff one thing I don't like about it, which is I found that if the ohms are e is, for example, 0.61, it will show 0.7, or if it's 0.71, it'll show 0.8 or point whatever. It just rounds up. But the interesting thing is that when I use a atomizer tester to see what the ohms actually are, and I use a tankometer to see what the volts actually are, this this APV is amazing. It's hitting at exactly whatever watts that I program in. Now, um, I probably have to preface this. I'm doing this review from the side of somebody who likes low ohms, high voltage vaping. Now, I have heard from some others that uh, that they like uh, very low voltage, you know, seven watt vaping, and that has trouble stepping down. And maybe that'll be my next video. I don't have any high ohm atomizers, you know, on hand. Um, but I believe it needs to be tested because the result that I'm getting on this is different than the video. I have a vague recollection of Phil Bassardo. Okay, Phil, when he did it, when you went sub ohm, it just wouldn't show anything, but it would run it. This, when you go sub ohm, 
goes down to 0 0.6 and shows everything, but then, um, you know, it, actually it's 0.61. If I go under 0.61, the atom, I, I believe it doesn't show. But anyway, it goes to 0.61 and shows everything, okay? And whereas his didn't. So I believe that there are some changes in the chip. And it will be very interesting to see what will happen when I put a 1.8 on and when I put a 2.5. But at the moment, I only have 0 0.6, 0 0.8. The most I have is uh, 1.1, okay? So first of all, I would give a quadruple, triple thumbs up. One, two, three for that DNA 20D chip. As far as I know, it blows any other variable volt chip out of the water in terms of high, you know, high volts vaping. In addition, it's doing it with just one 18650 battery. Hey, it's not a stock, a stacked mod, which means, um, you know, I was replaced my other variable volt unit, which used the two 18350s. I was, I believe I was replacing them more often, and I was doing it like two, three, three times a day. And it's a lot of batteries. I needed a six battery charger. This one I can go through two batteries a day very, very comfortably. So, as far as I know, um, I, I've been told the VAMO will only go to like 10 or 12 watts, um, you know, with one battery in it. And that you have to get the full 15, you have to go to two. And then, from what I've heard, this is hearsay. On the VAMO, even though it puts out 15 watts um, under load, it, it, the atomizer just doesn't do the right voltage. Don't have a VAMO, don't plan to buy one, and that's just hearsay. Okay, but it doesn't matter because. I'm at 20 watts. I've tested it, checked it, and the DNA 20D is doing what it's supposed to do, which is give rock solid uh, wattage. Okay, so now as for the bogger box, okay, um, the customer service from uh, bogger box bots has always been excellent. Um, I do advise that whenever you do a support ticket, you do it right through his website. Um, you know, I once had an issue on a box and he handled it just stupendously. Um, unlike uh, some other companies that sell uh, bottom feeding boxes, whose name I won't say. <laughs> I don't feel like getting into another flaming war. But anyway, uh, you know, if you buy a DNA 20D bogger box, you will not be disappointed. Yes, it's killer on your wallet. Okay, this is expensive. I believe he's bottom of the line, he's at 220, and by the time you put everything in it, you might be up to 270. I mean, that's a lot of money to spend. But you know something? Um, to get the best, okay, arguably the best, because everybody has their preferences, but to get the best. Okay, and to get uh, you know a beautiful handcrafted, and by the way, did I mention that Marcus is manufacturing these in New Mexico? So we're talking American made. The chip is the DNA uh, 20D. Okay, that is from Evolve, which I believe is an American company. So you know I'm spending a lot of money, but you know I feel a little bit better about it because I know that the money is staying more or less in the country, that it's not, um, you know, nothing against China, okay? I make a living off of wholesaling Chinese products, but um, I, my preference is to buy American wherever possible. Anyway, thanks for uh, listening. This is, you know, a kind of an informal uh, review, and uh, there's a thread on the ECF that I'll start, It'll start with this review. And then after this, I may have one more video. But what I'll do is I will probably just post uh, pictures and things, you know, demonstrating what the box is doing and uh, the tolerances. So um, triple thumbs up the DNA 20D. And we'll give two thumbs up to the Bogger box because it's beautiful. It's The craftsmanship is excellent. The durability, you know, aside from being wood, you know, is excellent. The way he epoxies 
heavily epoxies or you know seals the uh, 510 connection in so that you don't end up uh, with I've never had any problems making contact is just uh, you know is just tremendous the 8 milliliter bottle to last all day you know that's that's just a tremendous feature y'all have a good day night evening morning goodbye